solution to a problem. And on BBC TV, some years ago, there was a program. The program was about polygamy. So they brought a group of women, asking them one by one, what do you think, madam? So a woman gives a point of view, says, mm, oh, my dead body, I'll never allow my husband to have another wife. And you, madam, he said, well, you see, if the man will look after me and my children, I don't mind sharing a husband. And you, madam, never. And you, madam, so by the time the program was over, half an hour gone. So these organizers, they got those women again. So what kind of women were they, those who didn't mind? And what kind of women were those who opposed it tooth and nail? So they brought the same team back again onto the program. Now, madam, are you married? Said yes. Do you mind sharing a hus your husband with another woman? Said never. You are you married? No. You mind sharing a husband? Said no, I don't mind. You know, if I get somebody to look after me and my children, right? It was fifty-fifty. Those who had, they said they won't share. Those didn't have, they didn't mind sharing. So it's a question of haves and have nots. You see, vested interests. But otherwise, it is a solution to a problem. This is what. Yes. Any other question? Yes. The only way you can meet these forces is to study the textbooks. There is no other way. See, Allah gives us the secret. The secret is Allah says, Pul hatu burhanakum. Whenever anybody makes a claim, they are making a claim, they say, وَقَالُوا They say, لَنْ يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةَ إِلَّا مَنْ كَانَ هُدًا أَوْ نَصَارًا That you Muslims will never, never enter Jannat. There is no heaven for you. Unless you become a Jew or unless you become a Christian. That's the claim then, that's the claim now. Though the Jews have fallen out of the race, they only want political recognition. They are not interested in converting you. You have to be born a Jew to be a Jew. They want you to accept them that Palestine, you give it to them, there will be peace between us and them. Because our is not a racial war, it is not a religious war. Our battle with the Jew is for that piece of land which they have stolen from our brethren. That's our battle. They are not interested in converting us. But the Christian we know, they are making a mess out of the Muslim world. They have perverted more Pakistanis into Christianity since independence than in the 150 years of British rule. They have perverted, converted more Bangladeshis into Christianity since independence than in the previous 150 years of British rule. They have converted 15 million Indonesians into Christianity. And by the turn of the century, they want to make Christ Indonesia a Christian nation. And there are every sign that they will succeed. The answer to this problem is that you have to master his book. Allah says, when they make any claim, it's still ka'amani yuhum, that this is their wishful thinking, vain desires, hallucination. We say bakwas, bakwas, babbling, babbling. Don't be afraid of them. Pull! Tell them how to burhan. Produce your proof. Your burhan. In kuntum swadikin, if you're speaking the truth, let's have a look at your certificate that entitles you to heaven and destines us to hell. Let's have a look at it. Did you do that? No. 1,000 years, 1,400 years, have you been asking them for the Burhan? No! I don't know why. I'm asking the Arabs, how is it that you read this and you didn't do the job? 1,400 1, years, the Muslims is supreme in Egypt. 1,400 years. And today they are boasting there are 10 million Coptic Christians there. In Egypt. 1,400 years, you had a good inning. And in 1,400 years you could make a dent in the Christian community? Why? Simple reason, you didn't ask for his Burhan. And unless you ask for his Burhan, you can't talk. There's no way you can open the subject with them. They're already their program brainwashed to say, Christ died for the sins, salvation is yours. You can sweat it out. Five times a day you can pray, fast for one whole month. These are all like filthy rags, he says. Rubbish, worthless rubbish. He says, salvation only comes through the blood of the Lord Jesus. Once you accept that, all our philosophy, psychology, logic, it won't make a headway. You've got to break through. And the only way you can break through is Kul hatu burhanakum. Let us have a look at your burhan, your proof. And when you see that, you find it's all hocus pocus. You can find, you can go to town, you can crack his skull. He hasn't got a thing. Wallah, he hasn't got a thing. And there isn't Christians born who can stand before you. If you only master these little pebbles, these little booklets. 
And each and every Muslim should be going and doing his job. You don't wait for Ahmad Didat or Sheikh bin Baz or so and so or Sheikh. This is every Muslim's duty. According to your capacity, just learn these things, master them and go to town, man. It's a privilege Allah has given you and me. He said, He's given you a deen, that's to master, overcome and supersede them all, bulldoze them all. That's what Allah says. This is the destiny of his deen. Walau kari hal mushrikun. He said, now mind how the mushrik might not like it. This is the destiny of his deen. Master them all, bulldoze them all. You believe in it? You believe in it? Yes. I want to hear. Yes. 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 That's why you're sitting on your backside doing nothing. Yeah. We're doing nothing. You sit on our backside doing nothing. We believe what you believe. You don't really believe. That's the trouble. See, we say we believe. We don't really believe. However, yes, my son. Yes, in a debate, you put an Siraj in a political perspective. Now, if you look at the uh, history and analyze the facts, all Palestinians have been killed by so-called Arab leaders than by the Israelis. More of the suppression is coming from our Arab leaders. If I was to call for Islam in Iraq, I would be put into prison. If I was to call for Islam in Syria, I would be hanged. So can you comment on that subject, please? <laughs> You're talking about politics. <laughs> you see, our battle was, our battle was the Quran or the Bible. That was the subject of the debate, the Quran or the Bible, which is God's word. And in that battle, this Palestinian Christian has already sold out. That's that's for you to now go and fight them out. You go and fight them now, you see. Yes, see my battle is with the guy who is coming along and knocking at my door. Talk to him, how to talk to him. Yes, Ben? Um, <coughs> <coughs> Uh, the question is, were there any Muslims existing in the time of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, in the time of Jesus? Is that the question? Yes. You see, anyone who hearkened to the message of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam was a Muslim. Jesus was a Muslim and his religion was Islam. There was no such thing as Christianity. The teachings of the church where they say that Jesus is God is not his teaching. He never preached any such thing. He is telling his people that they must be better than the Jew. Unless you are better than the Jew, the Jew was just formalistic, he's keeping the letter of the law, forgetting the spirit. He says, there is no heaven for you. That's his teaching. He's telling them, come, I will teach you how to pray. Pray like this. And he's teaching them. He said, oh, our father, which art in heaven, God Almighty, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is the prayer that he thought. He didn't say the father of Jesus Christ in heaven or me Jesus who is in heaven. He is talking about the father in heaven. So in other words he was preaching nothing but Islam. The churches is quite a different thing altogether. It's not his teaching. They are their own creation. But anyone who followed Musa alayhi salam was a Muslim. Anyone who followed Isa alayhi salam was a Muslim. But these people have now deviated. They have deviated from the teachings of Hadith Isa Yes, brother. You had a question? Yes. This uh, booklet of, of yours, the Quran, the ultimate miracle. Uh, well, I have a cassette of it, you know, I want to see it as uh, you don't see it. But whenever I try to show it to our uh, mullahs, you know, they don't accept it and they don't believe in it. Uh, could you please... Uh... Uh, there was a book I had written. Al-Quran, the ultimate miracle. I had delivered talks on the subject and there were videotapes and cassettes available. But this man who originally made the discovery, which I found useful in talking to Muslims and non-Muslims, but this man, a sickness has developed. Now he's claiming to be a new Rasulullah, like what Baha'u'llah was at one time and Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. This is a sickness, this is a sickness that is quite common. You see, once a person, you know, he finds that he's so clever, that people are, you know, hero-worshipping him. And, you know, whatever I say, I know these people will believe. So the man creates a sickness, this man I can make claims. Today, this guy called Rashad Khalifa, he is the man who discovered this theory, Alayhati Satasha. Now he said he is a new Rasul, 
He's a messenger of God. There are certain flaws in the theory, but besides that now he's claiming